What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today I will be reviewing a beer from the Vale Brewing Company, and they're out of Richmond, Virginia, and this is their White Ferrari. So this is a double IPA that comes in at 8% alcohol by volume, no IBUs list in time of review. This can is approximately one month old, and I'm gonna give a huge thanks and shout out to a friend of mine and viewer of the channel, Alex, for hooking me up with this one. So thank you very much, Alex. In the description box, I'll post a link to the Beer Mal unboxing video I did that contains all the goodies that Alex sent my way. He sent me some Burley Oak beers, some Dewey beers, and a couple odds and ends, and this was one of the odds and ends. And uh, you know what? I have not reviewed any Vail beers on my channel, but I've had stuff from them in the past, and I really enjoy what they do. So uh, very appreciative that you sent this one my way, Alex. Can't wait to uh, get into it. So this is, like I said, a double IPA, and they're brewing this with a 50-50 blend of Citra and Galaxy Hops, and pretty much all I know about it, let's crack it open, it has a dent. It can has a dent. We should be fine, but yeah, I was hoping that, you know, I was hoping that this would survive when I saw it. I was like, oh boy, hopefully it's not all left up, and it's not. So give this a pour here. Oh yeah, that's looking fantastic. Looking like juice. I'll go like that. So yeah, you're probably not going to be able to see the uh, label or anything all that well, although it's kind of like uh, silver on uh, silver font on a uh, white background, so can't really see it all that well in person. Anyway, yeah, that looks like a New England style IPA. It has this uh, honey orange color, yellow orange color, very murky and turbid, about a finger, finger and a half of this bright white, creamy looking colored head. Looks fantastic. Let's get a nose. Very nice. Ooh, she got like a, almost a, a bubblegum thing. Like a, like almost like juicy fruit bubblegum. It's funny, now I'm thinking about it. I think I did a uh, duo review. We, yeah, I did a duo review with um, Sean over at NerdSense at the 2019 Shelton Brothers Festival uh, here in Buffalo, New York. And I forgot what Vail beer we did, but during that review, I remember getting a distinct bubblegum like juicy fruit, or, or Sean did. And I was like, yeah, you know, you're right. And sure enough, I'm getting it here. So it has to be probably, well, it doesn't have to be, but it's probably the yeast. But definitely juicy fruit, passion fruit, pineapple, a little bit of an underlying honeydew melon, sweeter citrus fruits, orange, tangerine, like the juice of those fruits. It's a soft dankness in here as well. That juicy fruit is interesting. So I'm one of those guys that... So many people will be like, oh, yeah, you drink a treehouse beer, or I guess a, a Vail beer. So many of these New England style IPAs, and it's like bubblegum. That's like one of the distinct characteristics they get. And I'm one of those guys that do not get I, I do not get bubblegum too often in my New England style. But I definitely feel like, obviously, that's the yeast profile. And this is the one of the rare beers where I'm totally getting it. Yeah, it smells sweet, but reserved. That bubblegum, pretty fantastic. Fruit forward, a little bit of soft dankness. Smells delicious. Let's get into it. Cheers, everybody. Thanks again, Alex. Wow, it's incredibly easy to drink. Body in this one, 8%, it's like higher side to medium body, almost approaching low full. This has a big heft behind it, really nice. Mouthfeel is the epitome of a New England Sal double IPA. Super soft, super smooth, super creamy, slightly undercarbed. Yeah, that's it's in the wheelhouse of what I'm expecting from a New England Sal double IPA. The taste, that juicy fruit's definitely there, a little bit dialed back from the nose, so most likely the yeast. And then I'm getting more citrus fruit and the taste. Crushed orange, like just like really vibrant orange juice, tangerine juice, dare I say, tangelo. Uh, that's all right up front. A little bit of pineapple and passion fruit hit me mid palate. You probably can hear that. It sounds like maybe a dirt bike or something going by, something terrible. Uh, anyway. A lot, of, a lot of fruit forward, juicy citrus components to this one. Mid palate is where that soft dankness kind of uh, creeps in. And this could just be my stupid palate, but there's like a, almost like a soft pine resin too I'm getting in the back of the palate. Yeah, and also now kind of lingering is like that honeydew melon papaya fleshy fruit too on the back of the palate. Wow, 8%, I can't tell you this is 8%. It drinks like it's five or six. The best thing about this beer to me right now is just how easy it drinks. That fucking dynamite from that perspective. 
I could crush that can in like five or 10 minutes. Honestly, I could just keep on drinking it. It's so smooth and so easy to drink. Wow. Yeah, the, the flavors here, here's the thing. The flavors here are not bombastic. Shout out to Paul over at Paper Reviews. It's not vibrant. They're not super intense. They're not punching me in the face. But it's so easy to drink and just delicious in its own right that I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm quite impressed by this beer. This leans a little bit more towards the sweeter side of things, but it has a semi-dry finish, very mild bitterness, but this definitely needs sweeter, which is my preference. If you had to, I want most of my beers to be balanced. You know, I want to just be right down the middle. But if I had a preference, if you want to lean toward, more towards the bitter dry side or to the sweeter side, it's always going to be sweeter side for me. And that's what this one is leaning. As you can see, I'm pretty much tearing this one up. Yeah, I'm going to give uh, White Ferrari from the Vale a low 4.5 out of 5. I'm going to go 4.4. .4. I was debating high 4.25 or low 4.5. I think for me, the drinkability bumps this into the low 4.5 range. So 4.4 .4 out of 5 for White Ferrari. If you've had this one before, definitely let me know what you think about it because it's quite delicious. Price and availability, pretty sure these are brewery only. Maybe they do mobile canning releases or, you know, maybe they'll do special or maybe it gets into local bottle shops. I have no idea. So Alex, if you know or anybody who has drank the Vail stuff or can get their hands on it, let me know the availability. Price point on this one, uh, $17 a four pack. Yes, I would easily pay $17 a four pack for this. I'd pay $20 a four pack for this. That's how good this beer is. It's just, it's not the most overly complex the double IPA in the New England style that I've ever had. It's not even close. But what it lacks in flavor, it makes up for in drinkability. And I always mention drinkability, and I, I've never really explained myself. I, drinkability to me is like, it doesn't matter the characteristics of beer. It doesn't matter, matter like what tasting notes you get or whatever. How easy the beer drinks from a body mouthfeel and just how, I guess, easy it slides down the throat or, and just you can crush this one. And to me, this is not overly complex. There's, you know, four or five different characters here, but it's so easy to drink that like when I'm drinking it, it's just enjoyable. It's like each sip is like, oh yeah, this is, this is a fucking tasty beer. Like, yeah, sure. It's not blowing me away from a flavor perspective, but it's so easy to drink. I don't care. So if I could get my hands on this regularly, this would be like a fridge beer. This would be a beer I throw in the fridge. I'm like, okay, today I want just an 8% double IPA. I would go to this and just have a great time drinking. And I'm going to have a great time drinking the rest of this one. So thanks again, Alex, for the hookup. I truly do appreciate it. Damn tasty beer. Really enjoyable. Appreciate everybody else stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. Like I said, if you've had this one before, let me know what you think about it. until the next one. Cheers. Oh yeah, like I said, 8%. Where? Where? Cheers.